Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is the day I am getting started on our in-ground garden area. We are looking at rain for probably about the next two weeks straight, assuming the forecast is correct. So today I want to just get going on this and uh, have everything in place so I don't have to work in the rain. So I've got some stuff that I wanna get planted in here. I need to get the soil amended in the rows and any apple leaves that fell in to this area in the fall, I'm just gonna work into the soil. I also do need to add more straw between the rows. I don't think I'm gonna to get to that today. We'll see how things play out. And I have a couple more raised beds that I'm hoping to get amended as well. So I've gone ahead and added compost into all the rows that I'm planting in today and I am ready to get started on planting some potatoes. So this year the potato varieties that we're going to be growing are Russet Burbank which I've done the last couple years. They grow really well for us. I'm also going to try Pacific Russets which I have not grown before but I'm curious to see how they do. And then we're also going to do Christina which is a red variety. Now most years we do a lot of Cycland or Siegland, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but I did not get any seed potatoes in time for those. So I'm not growing any of those this year. We have already eaten through what we grew last year as far as the Cycland go. So I am going to be doing a little bit extra fingerling potatoes this year, which I really love to grow. We typically grow banana fingerling. So I am doing lots of those this year, but I'm also adding a couple other varieties. So we're going to do some Russian blue and some French fingerling as well. I love having those to roast. So I'm going to share with you guys the best way that I have found to plant potatoes. Keep in mind, I am very much so a beginner gardener. We've only been doing this for a handful of years, but this has been the best way that I have found to do it. So that is using a drill auger. And then in my rows, I'll just go 12 inches down, about 12-ish inches apart, pop a seed potato in there, cover them up, and that is it. So then later in the season, we don't have to be doing any hilling or anything like that. They grow really well, and it's a really low maintenance way to do it. And then a, another trick that I found last year is something to help with potato scab. So in the past, that is something that we've dealt with quite a lot. So basically you just take a cup of molasses in a five gallon bucket of water, and I'll give a good splash to each hole as I'm planting. That is it. And how that's supposed to work, if I understand correctly, I did more research on this last year, but is the molasses essentially is going to feed the good bacteria so that it can proliferate. And that is going to kind of overpower the bad bacteria that would cause the potato scab, something along those lines. So what I do know is that it worked. We didn't have any potato scab last year. So I am going to continue to do that.
behind this in-ground garden space, we have an apple tree that partially shades that back row. So what I'm gonna try to do this year is plant peas back there and see if I can get them established before that apple tree really fills out and starts to cast a lot of shade in that back area. So if it works out, that will be great. If it doesn't, it's not a big loss. So how I'm planning to do that is by using an extra hog pedal that we have. And I was gonna do T-posts, but all the T-posts that we have are at least seven feet tall, which is just not necessary. So we're gonna get that set up later today, probably just with some wood stakes. And we'll probably have to do a little bit extra just to support the weight of it. This year I grabbed some onion sets and I don't typically grow from onion sets, but they were on sale and I figured why not go ahead and grab them? I start all of my onions from seed. I find that I get a much bigger bulb that way. So those ones that I started from seed this year are not quite ready to plant out yet, but I am gonna go ahead and get the sets into the ground. So I just saw that there was a pack on sale, um, which is kind of what sparked my desire to do this. And I thought it'd be interesting to try those side by side. I've never done both sets and onions started from seed in the same year. So we're gonna see how that goes. I know that I will end up getting a bigger bulb from the ones I started from seed, but I thought it would just be interesting to see a little bit of a comparison. Something I'd like to do more of this year are flowers. I am very much so a practical gardener. I have always focused on food, just growing as much as I can for us to put up. And this year I do want to focus a little bit more on flowers and it needs to be low maintenance because I don't want to add any more work to my to-do list. So I want to grow a lot of zinnias this year that we can use for cut flowers, but they're also just gonna look really pretty in the garden, which is going to make the work a little bit more enjoyable. So the front row of our in-ground garden space, I am gonna sow a ton of zinnias in. I'm just going to scatter a mix of seeds pretty heavily. Um, I'm not gonna thin them out or anything like that. Again, we're going for low maintenance. And I think this is gonna look really pretty, especially having it right at the front of the in-ground garden space. So when you walk into the garden through our arch trellises that we have in the raised beds in front, this is what you'll be able to see. The varieties of zinnias that I'm gonna grow here are mostly a mix of California giants. I'm also gonna have some queen lime red, queen lime orange, and then queen lemon peach zinnias all mixed in. I'm also gonna throw in some Pumila salmon zinnias, which I haven't grown before, but they look super pretty, so I'm excited to have some of those out here as well. So for these, all I'm gonna do is scatter them, cover them with a little bit of soil, and just let them do their thing, and it is gonna turn out really pretty. All right, so I've got the potatoes, onions, and zinnias in. And then later this evening, after we've got that hog panel all set up, I'm gonna go ahead and get some peas sown. Now this year, I am just going to be doing snow peas because I have a ton of seed for that. And hopefully they work out. Again, it's not a big deal if they don't, but it would be really nice to have a bunch that we could put into the freezer to use in stir fries throughout the year. That's kind of my main goal with them. And then of course, fresh eating as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up here. Thank you guys for spending the day in the garden with me. Not a whole lot going on out here quite yet. We've got some radishes, lettuce, and carrots slowly starting to poke up, and then of course the garlic, but that is about it at this point.
coming around.